What's going on guys, your boy Terabyte Reacts here, and we are back with more reaction, Game of Thrones, theory videos, yes. Anyways, let's jump into this man, it is another theory video right here that we got, um, Tyrion, Targaryen, um, many people seem to think that Tyrion is a Targaryen, um, so I wanna hear this theory. Um, as I've stated before, like we were having this conversation before, um, I think it was on the live stream we were talking. And I was like, it would be kind of an asshole if they actually reveal this in season in season eight. Um, it it would be a bit of an asshole to find out, even though um, you guys have given me some more information, telling me that the Mad King was in love with with um with Tywin's wife and. All of this other stuff, so um, it's a possibility that he raped her, and you know Tywin is in denial and all of this other stuff. So let's hear what this guy has to say because he seems to do a pretty good job with his theory videos. Um, he does it based on the books mostly, so let's hear what he has to say. Tyrion Lannister is one of the most popular characters in Game of Thrones, and for good reason. Tyrion is funny and clever, but also flawed and pained. He shows kindness to the vulnerable and the back of his hand to dickheads like Joffrey. He's had a pretty rough time of it. He's been falsely accused of murder, imprisoned, caught up in a war, then politics, ended up in another battle, had his face cut off, was forced into a deeply uncomfortable marriage, was falsely accused of murder again, betrayed by his lover, sentenced to death, and ended up killing his dad. Or was it his dad? Officially, Tyrion is the son of Tywin Lannister and Tywin's cousin Joanna. True. But a controversial fan theory claims that Tyrion's real father is the Mad King, Aerys Targaryen. Yeah. So, back in the bad old days of the Mad King's reign, the Targaryens were in charge, <laughs> and young Joanna a companion of Rhaella, Aerys' sister and eventual queen. Meanwhile, Tywin grew up frustrated with his father, Lord Tytos, who had a reputation for weakness and was openly mocked to the point that Tywin began to mistrust laughter itself. Tywin became determined to be the powerful, respected, even feared man that his father was not. So he slaughtered the rebellious Tarbex on the reins of Castamere, began restoring the prestige and power of House Lannister, and was made Hand of the King. Not long after, Tywin and Joanna were married. Tywin loved Joanna. Apparently he smiled at their wedding, and Tywin doesn't smile much. But something else happened that night. According to Sir Barristan, who was Kingsguard at the time, King Aerys wanted Joanna for years. At her wedding to Tywin, Eris made a drunken joke that implied that he wanted to sleep with her, and later he took liberties. We don't know exactly what those liberties were, it uh, probably wasn't sex, and it liberties. was too early to have been Tyrion's conception anyway, but what this shows is that King Eris lusted for Tyrion's mother, and did something to her on her wedding night. Okay. In A Storm of Swords, Joffrey tells Sansa that kings often sleep with whoever they want, including married women. So King Eris not only wanted Joanna, he probably could have had her. Aerys Targaryen might have fathered Tyrion. But just quickly, it has been questioned whether Joanna was even at King's Landing with Aerys at the time of Tyrion's conception. It seems likely that she was, because Tywin presumably would have been there as Hand of the King, and Joanna must have been with Tywin, if not Aerys, for Tyrion's conception. That said, Joanna was apparently at Castle Rock shortly before giving birth to Tyrion. She died giving birth to Tyrion, by the way. So it's unclear. Maybe Joanna was at King's Landing with Aerys, and that's when Tyrion was conceived, or maybe Joanna was at Castle Rock the whole time, and it couldn't have been Aerys. Or, for all we know, Aerys could have fathered Tyrion at Castle Rock. Basically, it's inconclusive, <laughs> and it may have been Aerys. So if it was Aerys who fathered Tyrion, does Tywin know? It's conceivable that he never knew. Maybe Joanna was threatened into keeping it secret. And Tywin's ignorance of Jaime and Cersei's relationship shows that he's impressively good at being ignorant of the sexual proclivities of his loved ones. But it makes a lot of sense if Tywin did know, firstly because he outright says it a couple of times, and also because it explains Tywin's hatred for Tyrion. This hatred is usually said to be because Tyrion killed Joanna in childbirth, which is kind of a ridiculous reason to hate the kid, or he hates Tyrion for making a mockery of House Lannister by publicly drinking and whoring. Even that is kind of hard to believe. Tywin has been an absolute cut for Tyrion well before Tyrion was drinking and whoring. Tyrion was just 16 when Tywin refused to let him travel and instead put him in charge of all the drains and cisterns within Castle Rock, and just 13 when he had Tyrion's love Tysha raped by his guards. Like, fuck, who could do that to their own son? Jaime and Cersei have their personality defects, but Tywin doesn't do anything to them. Nor without good reason, anyway. 
Further, Tywin disowns Tyrion when Tywin is obsessed with his legacy. Is it really worse for him to have Tyrion as an heir than no heir at all? Tywin knowing, or suspecting, Tyrion to be Aerys' son makes all of this make sense. When Aerys made Jaime Kingsguard, and therefore ineligible to inherit Castle Rock, Aerys made his bastard Tyrion the heir to Tywin's legacy. That spits in the face of everything Tywin works for. So of course Tywin disowns Tyrion, of course he treats the Mad King's son like shit, and of course he sacks Aerys' city shortly after the thing with Jaime. The real question is why Tywin would allow Tyrion to live as a Lannister at all. For real? Maybe because despite being the Mad King's bastard, despite being a dwarf, Tyrion is Joanna's son. A Lannister, and the son of the woman Tywin loved more than anything. It might even be a promise me Tywin sort of a situation. So Tywin treats Tyrion pretty abhorrently, but still ensures he lives a very comfortable life as a member of one of the great houses, funds him with plenty of gold, and only tries to have him killed occasionally. You know, by uh, putting him on the front lines of this battle for no clear reason. Maybe Tywin figured that way he could get rid of Tyrion without directly kinslaying. Anyway, so here's the next piece of evidence. It's a common Targaryen trait to have dreams of dragons, often prophetic dreams. Daenerys, Aemon, Daeron, and Daemon Targaryen are all known to have dragon dreams. The other character who dreams of dragons is Tyrion. Tyrion's That's interest true. in dragons, though, is clearly a different thing to the dreams had by Danny and others. There's no evidence of Tyrion having literal dreams about dragons at all, certainly nothing like this stuff. The likely explanation is that Tyrion just liked dragons, because dragons are cool. The reference <laughs> to Tyrion's dragon dreams is maybe a hint, but it's not a strong one. So now Tyrion's appearance. Tyrion has one green eye and one black one, and hair that is both pale blonde and black. Lannisters are endlessly described as having golden blonde hair, but the pale blonde of Tyrion's hair seems more similar to Targaryen hair, which is generally described as silver blonde. It might be silly to pay this much attention to hair colour, but as we were taught in the first book, seed is strong, and hair colour can tell a lot about someone's parentage. Tyrion's pale blonde hair is more similar to the Targaryen silver than Lannister gold, so that could be a hint to his parentage. So Tyrion also has mismatched eyes. There's another character with mismatched eyes in the song, Shiera Seastar, a bastard of Aegon IV Targaryen. And like the two-coloured hair, the two-coloured eyes could symbolically indicate Tyrion's mixed blood. Maybe. A final note on his appearance. It's been suggested that Tyrion's dwarfism might be the result of Targaryen genetic weirdness, or possibly the result of attempted abortion. Don't know how biology works in the world of ice and fire, but we have no precedent for either of those things occurring, so they don't seem strong pieces of evidence. A final hint, and possibly a big one. If Tyrion is a Targaryen, he could fit very nicely into the prophecy of the three heads of the dragon. Tyrion, Danny, and Jon are the three main characters. They all have Targaryen blood. Each of their mothers died in childbirth. Each of them have had to kill someone they love. Each could correspond to one of the three living dragons with which they could fulfill the prophecy, unite the Seven Kingdoms, and defeat the evil others, and ride off for a party on the Summer Isles. Or something. It seems to work, but does it suit the cynical world George R. R. Martin has created? Does the ridiculed, disempowered dwarf have to turn out to be a magical dragon prince who saves the day, or can he have value just as a man? Are prophecies really even a thing anyway? Do they magically influence people's destinies in the Song of Ice and Fire, or do people fulfil them through their knowledge of them? We're several thousand pages in, and we've still never really clearly seen prophecy at work, <laughs> so the three heads of the dragon seem a shaky reason to believe Tyrion to be a Targaryen. <laughs> One of the main reasons why the theory ultimately is doubtful is that while Tyrion being a Targaryen bastard does make his awful relationship with Tywin easier to understand, it makes it something less. Jenna Lannister says that more than Jaime, Tyrion is Tywin's true son. Tyrion has all of Tywin's cunning, calculating nature and political skill, but in the form of a dwarf which Tywin, so sensitive to mockery and the appearance of weakness, cannot bring himself to respect. There's so much irony in that Tyrion's drinking and whoring is surely a consequence of his brutal mistreatment by his father, making him feel worthless and unloved. But the vices that Tywin hates Tyrion for are vices not only that he caused, but that he shares. Remember, Tyrion found Shay in Tywin's bed before he killed her, which mirrors something Tywin hated his father Tytos for. Late in life, Tytos took a common woman as a mistress and let her steal his dead wife's jewellery, after Tytos's death, Tywin punished the woman cruelly, running her naked through the streets of Lannisport and forcing her to publicly confess to being a thief and a harlot. So then late in his own life, after the death of his own wife, Tywin sleeps with a common woman and lets her wear his jewellery, the Hand of the King necklace. What Tywin hates in Tyrion is what he recognises in himself. When Tywin sits there, 
bleeding out, resolutely not shitting gold, and tells Tyrion, You're no son of mine. It doesn't mean Tyrion is a secret Targaryen bastard, it means something much more. It means Tywin has rejected his true-born son, refused him, and tormented him because he could not bear to look upon a twisted version of himself. And then Tyrion murders Tywin, with all the cold brutality of his father. It's tragic. It's complex. It's the human heart in conflict with itself. It's what George R. R. Martin's writing is really all about, not dragon writing and happy endings. So yes, Tyrion has some kind of Targaryen-ish characteristics, and yes, it's conceivable that King Aerys, old dirty bastard that he is, forced himself on Joanna and fathered Tyrion. But there's no really strong evidence, and it cheapens one of the most interesting relationships in the series. So for these reasons, it seems possible, but quite unlikely, that Tyrion is a Targaryen. Yeah. Thanks for watching this video. I if you'd like to I see definitely more. agree with him. Uh, as I've said before, it it just would be. <clears throat> and one good point that he made about the whole thing about people thinking that Tyrion is a Targaryen, that I really really agree with. It would taint a lot of stuff in the story. You know what I'm saying? Like the relationship between Tyrion and Tywin was one of the best arcs in Game of Thrones. I don't care what nobody has to say about that it was one of the best arcs in game of thrones it was one of the best things to watch both of them just go at each other um um the emotions that you felt because you know for a fact and you feel like tywin knows that it's his son and he just blames him for killing his beloved wife and you would just throw all of that out the door and say oh well he hated him he hates him because he believes he's not his son then then why why keep him? He made another valid point, you know, why keep him around, you know, because he is a Lannister. I mean, he says that multiple times during the show, he said, you are a Lannister, um, but you can't inherit um, Castle Rock, no way, no how. So, and and that's what I'm saying. It's like even Tywin himself was kind of, was kind of um, conflicted about the whole situation, you know, so it's kind of like, um, <clears throat> I totally agree with him, you know, when he says that it would cheapen, you know, one of the best relationships in Game of Thrones, because, I mean, but in my opinion, I don't want Tyrion to be, I just don't want him to be a Targaryen. I know a lot of people out there wish it that he was, because then he would have some sort of belonging, but I do believe that him being the exception to the norm for a Lannister is what makes him such a great character on the show, right? So it's, for me, I want him to stay right where he is, being a Lannister, being a prick to Cersei, being a prick, you know, to some degree to Jaime, you know what I'm saying? Like, Jaime doesn't hate him, he can't. Jaime has loved Tyrion even since birth, I mean, the things that Cersei did to Tyrion, uh, I think Cersei genuinely hates him just because of the fact that he killed his, her mom, um, but it's not really his fault why she died, I shouldn't even be saying he killed her, because it's as, it's as a result, because it does happen in real life, like, mothers will die um, because of childbirth, so, but it's not necessarily the child's fault fault why it's just complications can happen during child's birth and the the mom can die so it it is a possibility so it's you know for her to blame him for that is is uncalled for she just doesn't understand you know she just she blames him because you know when it when it comes down to grief people grieve grieve in different ways you know but one of the main things about grief is always blame when you don't know how to handle grief the first thing you turn to is blame who did it who did it let me put my grief on you let me take revenge on that person you know if you don't really know how to go through go through the the, the stages of grief you know what i'm saying it's you know you have the denial and all of this other stuff you know what i'm saying that you go through you know and blaming you know so I understand where she's coming from, but I'm surprised she did not. I think the only reason, as I've said during the reaction, 
when Tyrion went to talk to her about, you know, going north to fight the White Walkers, what I believe happened in that situation was I believe that she's she did not use the mountain to kill Tyrion here because she knew what would have happened. She knew it would have been all out war in King's Landing. You got dragons flying over the city right now. Like she has to think about all of that stuff before hurting Tyrion because she knows Daenerys would go batshit crazy over there for Tyrion. So she wasn't going to do that. So let's cool off of these. I, I, I love the theory though. I love the theory. I love the theory of Tyrion being a Targaryen. I dig it. I really do. I really do dig it. I understand why you guys wanted me to react to this. I understand why people want him to be a Targaryen. But at the same time, it, I'm, I'm going to be on the other side of this. Of this, I don't want Tyrion to become a Targaryen. I, you know what I'm saying? I just don't. I just think the dragons were just smart enough to understand that he was an ally. That's all that, that was about when he went in there to take the chains off of them. I think that's all that's about. Okay? So, um, so yeah. If this is the first time you're seeing me react, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Also, leave a like on the channel. Also, leave a comment in the comment section. We love when people comment around here. And also, you already know who it is. It's your boy, Terabyte Reacts. And peace.